Okay, so I'm going to give a different derivation of logistic regression than I gave last time. So the last time we derived the loss function version of logistic regression, and this is the likelihood derivation. And I put, I kept the uh, the loss function version up in that corner there, um, and we'll get to exactly that same optimization problem, but from a different perspective. Okay, so I want to introduce this function, which is called the logistic function. This is not the logistic loss, it is the logistic function. Okay, so this function, if you think about it, it grows and then it saturates. Now this function was invented by uh, scientists um, Adolf Quetelet and Francois-Pierre Verhulst, who were studying the growth of populations. And so they thought that they would you know, model that, that populations would grow and then the country would get full and then it would saturate. Okay, so so they were looking at sort of the proportion of the population, the proportion of the country's total number of people, right? And, and so that value would saturate as you get more people. Okay, so I'm just gonna put the formula over here for that function that they invented. And you can see what, what it does. Um, so if, so the value, so T is along the x-axis here. And if T is really big, then that one in the denominator is like minuscule. So you'll get, you'll get a value close to one for, lo for the logistic function. And then if t goes off to negative infinity, the numerator will be essentially zero. So you'll get um, something that's close to zero. So, um, it's, so it's a really useful function because it gives you, you know, any real number, like I said, gets mapped to a probability. So we can use it for probabilistic modeling. Okay, and in particular, uh, we're gonna use it to model the probability um, for logistic regression, that, that the probability that y equals one given x and some coefficients beta, okay? So here we assume that, um, let's assume that beta is the, the ground truth beta, like that, that let's assume that um, this model actually generated our data, okay? So if you knew x and beta, then you could generate data like this. You would say, okay, give me x beta, fine. Now I know the probability that y equals one, so, then that's the probability with which I will generate my label y equals one for this particular value of x. Okay, so this is a probabilistic model. And I know you don't know the value of beta yet, but that's what the optimization problem will help us get. So don't worry about that yet. Okay, so the probability that y equals one is that quantity there. That means um, the probability that y equals minus one is just one minus that because you know, y can only be either plus one or minus one because we're doing binary classification. So you either have one or minus one and probability just have to add up to one. So there you go. Okay, so now I'm just gonna do a little simplification right there, nothing fancy. And then I can write down um, the likelihood for a particular data point is, the, is by definition, it's the probability that y equals whatever it actually was given x and beta, okay? So, and I know how to calculate this now because I have these, I have these quantities, I have both, you know, options listed there, right? So if y equals minus one, I use the equation at the top and if for y equals one, you could use the equation at the bottom, right? Okay, so I can calculate the likelihood either way. Uh, now I'm going to try to unite these two formulations. So the first thing I want to notice is that if y equals minus one, the negative y is just one. So I can happily multiply by negative y and nothing changes. So that's what I did. I multiplied by one in disguise. And then on the bottom, I'm, I just did a little simplifying there. I just divided both sides, both top and bottom by e to the x beta, so x i beta, fine, done. And then I'm gonna do that one in disguise trick again. So y equals one, so I can just multiply by y and nothing changes. There we go. And now the really cool thing you should notice here is that these two expressions are actually the same. So regardless of whether you have y equals minus one or y equals one, then the probability that y equals what it is is just that thing there, this thing there. Okay, cool. So now that's the likelihood for one data point, but I have lots of data points and they're all independently drawn which means their probabilities multiply, right? So um, that's why it gets to put the product there when I compute the likelihood of the overall data set. Okay, cool. So now I have the likelihood of the overall data set, which is this 
the product of these probabilities that come from the logistic regression model. So I'm just putting that all together at the bottom, just copied what I had up at the top, nothing fancy at all. And then I'm um, just going to take negative log of both sides. And if that, as usual, has the benefit of turning products into sums. So now I'm back to uh, sum. Now, the negative and the fraction can cancel each other out. And so I get back to something that should look very, very familiar because it's very close to what's in the top corner of the slide, which is the original derivation of logistic regression. Now, there is one thing missing, which is a one over n. But for minimization problems, constants don't matter. So um, unless the constant was negative or something, then okay, then maybe it matters. But here, um, it's just a one over n, so it doesn't affect the solution of the minimization problem. So we are back to exactly the uh, loss minimization version of logistic regression. Okay, so now we've derived logistic regression twice. But now we have a probabilistic interpretation for the logistic regression results. Okay, so now if you give me x beta, this is something we didn't have with the loss function version, right? You give me x beta, I can give you back a probabilistic explanation for what's going on. I can tell you that you give me x beta and I'll give you back the probability that y equals one given x and beta, which is following that formula right there. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you a little bit more geometric intuition. So I'm back to the, um, the, the sort of geometric explanation I had where f being positive is on one side and f being negative is on the other side. And I have some data points that are misclassified. Yeah, that happens. And then you actually have these nice curves, right? That um, that give you the that give you the interpretation of the probability. So it's like that, you know, it's the probability that y equals one given x and beta. Okay, so you have higher probabilities over on the positive side, and you have um, lower probabilities over on the negative side. So you, you give me a new point, x beta, and you can get back an, an estimate of the probability that y equals 1 for that new x. Okay, so just to summarize logistic regression, you train the model. It comes from the minimization of our logistic loss, or else the negative log likelihood. And then once you have that beta that fits the data well, then you can use that to give a score for each new test point. So if you have a new test point, you can use um, that beta that you created to, to give um, a, a score for that uh, test point. And if you like, you can give it the prob probabilistic interpretation from the last slide. Thank you.